मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन यान मैन्युफैक्चरिंग दिस इज शिव जगदीश कुमार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ टेक्सटाइल टेक्नोलॉजी विज्ञान यूनिवर्सिटी आई होप यू ऑल आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी एंड वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वेरियस फैक्टर्स एफेक्टिंग द जिमिंग परफॉर्मेंस वेरियस फैक्टर्स एफेक्टिंग द जिनिंग परफॉर्मेंस एज एर्लियर वी हैव डिस्कस जिनिंग इज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ सपरेशन ऑफ सीड्स एंड फाइबर्स कपास इज द इनपुट फॉर अ जिनिंग वेल एंड लिड इज द आउटपुट एंड सीड्स इज अ पाइप फॉर दीज सीड्स कैन बी हैविंग वेरी नंबर ऑफ अप्लीकेशन इधर विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू द कॉटन सीड ऑयल और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ वेरियस केमिकल्स एंड But we are more interested in the length. Generally, out of a hundred kg of kapas as input, only thirty-five to forty kg will be obtained as a useful length. All others will be having applications somewhere else. So, in this class, we are going to discuss about various factors. Affecting the ginning performance. The factors may be environmental or machine related. So, just to recall the process of the yarn manufacture. So, the raw cotton will be the input, and then it will go to the ginning operation, where the seeds will be separated and lint will be made. Then, the process of blow room. carding draw frame comber split frame and ring frame will happen in such a way that the yarn will be produced we are going to discuss all these things in this entire course okay in all five units at present we are in unit 1 unit 1 will consist of between ginning and blow okay. so in the earlier classes we have discussed various ginning machinery which are used for manufacturing Just for a quick recall, I have kept the ginning principle the slide here. Okay. So what happens? The ginning roller will be there, and the seed cotton, the kapas will be fed, and a rotary knife will help in assisting it. And there will be a stationary knife which will not let the seed to pass through the ginning roller. And the surface of the ginning roller is generally having a little abrasive and adhesion in nature. so that the fibers will stick to the surface of the ginning roller and will try to go along with the ginning roller surface but the stationary knife will restrain the movement of the seed going along with the surface of the ginning roller so what happens the separation of fiber and seed will take place generally the amount of pulling force by the ginning roller should be greater than the force which is attached from the seed to the surface then only the ginning will happen otherwise what will happen the seeds will remain stronger and the fibers may get broken in between and which leads to more number of short fibers which we do not want a perfect ginning or a ideal ginning is the separation of seeds and fibers without damaging any of it is it so here the seeds will be separated and lint will be separated and it will be gone for that okay so this is a quick recap of what we have understood in the earlier classes so that it will be useful for understanding of this class so in this class we are going to discuss various factors so i have just recalling what is the ginning process so a seed cotton or the kapas will be kept in a module then it will be gone into an inclined cleaner to remove any of the trash particles and other things then if required a moisture sensor camera which is equipped in a dryer okay but in many as we discussed earlier in many of the indian ginning industries we do not use dryer what we do we dry up the cotton in a open land okay basically to reduce the power consumption cost after dryer one it may go to the cylinder cleaner then a stick machine in stick machine any of the 
big stick kind of thing or any of the small stones or anything which is there once it opens up due to the gravitational and centrifugal forces it will fall down okay so in in the entire process of yarn manufacturing the main cleaning process will majorly dependent upon the gravitational forces and centrifugal forces if you are not clear with this forces maybe we will discuss some time or you can google it and also understand what is the effect of gravitational and centrifugal forces so here the further opening in dryer to then again a cylinder cleaner then it will go to a gin stand where the ginning will happen then the lint will be further opened and then gone into the bale press so in this class we are going to discuss what are the various factors which will affect the performance of this ginning operation in the next class we will be discussing more about the bale press okay so i hope that this quick recap is much helpful for you to understanding this class okay so in order to understand better we also will see a ginning mill video okay so that whatever we understood earlier will be recorded okay cotton seeds are fed into dispenser by tractor front loader the dispenser supply consistent flow of cotton based on speed set stone and heavy immature bowl removal setup removes unwanted material to minimize the fire risk spare requirements and improve gin performance the seed cotton then passes to pre cleaner from air separator the pre cleaner has inbuilt bypass to avoid cleaning if required during equipment maintenance this seed cotton discharge from the pre cleaner is conveyed through a single distribution screw conveyor having twin auto regulator which is power efficient The overflow cotton gets collected into the overflow hopper. Also an optional one down point suction that works through a stone catcher. This entire arrangement places dispenser near to air separator, maximum 75 feet. A twin auto regulator has around 30 to 35 kg of seed cotton storage which acts as buffer and thus supply cotton instantaneously. when gin needs and stop it when it does not this ensures maximum productivity without spillage of seed cotton single bowl outside gin bajaj double roller gins the heart of ginning process are gentle cost effective and give the cleanest cotton with no seed breakage at highest productivity and minimum machine maintenance clean seeds after ginning are produced with minimum of lint coating over it seeds falling out of gin seed channel get conveyed through the below gin screw conveyor and then cross seed conveyor bucket elevator and overhead seed conveyor enable dropping of seed in multiple point for storage the lint from the roller gins coming out of both the rollers get collected into lint collection hopper set which is further connected to the suction of air separator and lint cleaner for cleaning and trash removal a fire detection and diversion setup can be added if required to detect and safely dispose of burn lint into quenching tank Lint cleaner is provided for handling and cleaning the lint collected from the ginning machines. Primary and secondary filters are provided for collection of short fibers and dust separately that is being flying in the atmosphere and laying in the dust room. The lint from the lint cleaner to press can be either conveyed by pneumatic suction or lint belt. 
the lint forms a lint layer like blanket into a battery condenser in case of pneumatic suction for making easy tramping and getting best bale sample look. The online lint warm humid air may be provided to humidify the lint cotton in press lint slide by diesel burner air heater and retain bale moisture at mill recommended moisture level without any quality damage of lint fiber even if bale is stored for longer duration. Lint then finally compressed into bale by either down packing bale press or up packing bale press. The Bajaj down packing bale press has 8, 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30 bale per hour different models. Indigenous design and 60, 70, 80 bale per hour different models. Continental Eagle design. This press can press even 228 kg of bale effectively for international requirement. Bajaj up packing press has 8, 15, 25 and 35 bale per hour various model with optional provision for full automation, provision for online bagging and weighing of bale, cooling tar, hydraulic oil and lint slide. The lint cotton after baling is then moved into warehouse for storage until it is shipped to a textile mill for use. Yes. So I, I suppose uh, you understood the working of the ginning mill from this uh, video. Okay. Now. We will dig into today's topic, the factors affecting the ginning performance. There are various factors which will affect the ginning characteristics and performance. Okay, uh, These can be for easily classified into two categories. One is the agricultural factors like uh, what is the climate condition, soil condition, rainfall, the pedology, like uh, uh, what is the relative humidity during uh, the cotton wall grown up and various cultural practices like what kind of uh, pesticides or what kind of uh, additions or uh, uh, fertilizers which will be given to this. This is one part. And, uh, and another one is the mechanical factors. Mechanical factors means what is the speed of ginning and uh, what is the temperature of drying. These things come into the picture. The agricultural practice factors which also include majorly what is the type of harvesting, what is the moisture content of the seed cotton, okay, what is the feed rate and uh, what is the strength of fiber attachment to the seed, what conditions of storage and transportation. These are very important while considering the ginning performance. So how do we assess the ginning performance? One is, are we able to achieve the best possible fiber length without damaging the fibers? That is the first one. Second one is, what is the trash percentage after the ginning is done? This is the second parameter. One is, how effective the fiber length we are able to achieve. Second one is, what is the trash percentage of the genid cotton? Okay, so the fiber strength should be as long as possible and it should not get damaged. So NEPS is another indirect method of seeing this first ones. The second one is the trash percentage which can be directly assessed. The lower the trash, the better it is. Okay. So we are going to see in detail about these parameters in this class. One is the type of harvesting. 
what is harvesting once the cotton is grown okay once the cotton is grown okay how we are taking the cotton from the plant that is nothing but the harvesting it can be in one of the simplest way is manual harvesting you send some people the people will go and see whether the cotton is fully ripened or not and accordingly they will plant okay so this is one another one is you send uh, maybe some people whichever is open the ball they will pick it okay these are referred as hand picking and hand stripping hand picking means they lose the intellectuality means whether we should pick the pick this one or not stripping means whichever is open everything will be picked okay in case of hand picking maybe a series of cotton picking cycles will take place in case of stripping most commonly one time or maximum second time also will be done similarly machine picking and stripping also will be done we will see about the, how it will be done and all then the second one is the the moisture content of the seed corn how much should be the moisture content as soon as the cotton which is taken from the plant as high as 30% of the moisture will be there okay it should need to be stored and little dried up so that the moisture content of the seed corn will be reduced the good or optimum condition of moisture content is somewhere around 7.5 percentage of the weight but what happens ki as it is harvested it will be up to 25 percent that is the reason in the earlier slides also we seen the dryer function but whereas in indian beginning industry central people will generally dry up under the sun so before actually entering into the ginning process this kapas will be stored maybe a week or sometimes two three weeks also under the hot sun such that what will happen it will pick up the moisture and the moisture will be reduced what happens if it is fully dried if it is fully dried then what will happen the cotton will become so much dried up overheating and it causes uh, what you call the weakening effect of the cotton and very short fibers means the fiber will get broken okay instead of separation at the seed part seed uh, surface it, in between the fiber length itself it will break okay and cotton is one of the hygroscopic material whereas it will absorb moisture okay and also the cotton can absorb up to 20 times of its own weight is it so what happens it is one of the hygroscopic in nature and cotton improves the stick means the moisture improves the stiffness of the cotton and strength of the cotton it requires some amount of moisture but not too much what happens if 20% moisture is there let it run what happens in the actual ginning process it will causes the choking up at too many frequently the choking will happen near the stationary knife and the ginning roller the separation may not takes place as the cotton is uh, uh, bulky and uh, having the moisture in it that's why the moisture content of the seed cotton is one of the important factors apart from the type of harvest okay then the third one is the feed rate of seed cotton what happens if you keep on feeding too much cotton so of course ginning will happen but if it crosses certain limit then what happens whatever the cotton which is liquid which is being produced from the ginning mill is going to have very inferior uh, strength okay and then the fiber attachment to seed we will see what factors uh, the fiber attachment to seed basically it is genetic okay in cotton there are so many varieties okay if you see the genetic varieties like that maybe up to 50 varieties are there which are found with respect to the cotton but out of them only four are commercially being used one is a uh, very long sea island cottons then american cottons asian cottons like this so we will see how it will affect and the fifth point with respect to prisoning like the storage and transportation what kind of storage mechanisms are being used and what kind of transportation is being used and the effect of storage with respect to the moisture content so we are going to discuss okay yes yeah so harvesting is nothing but of once 
the opened walls of cotton, it need to be collapsed. Okay, that is referred as harvesting. It can be either a hand picking or hand snapping or machine stripping and machine picking. These are the various methods. Okay, we will see. Of course, which one is good? Manual picking means basically we will pick only the fully ripened cotton, such that what happens to a good quality fibers only exist. Okay, but it involves a lot of money. Why? Because we need to give wages to too many operators. Okay, so that's why the machine stripping and machine picking came into picture. Okay, both are nothing but uh, similar machine picking and stripping. We will see what is the difference. Okay, so hand picking is the standard. By which all other methods of harvesting are assessed. If you assess all the four types, hand picking is the best. A higher grade of cotton is obtained by good hand picking. Okay, so subjective assessment is required. Okay, from operator to operator. So means the picker sir, what happens is they need to understand which is good quality and which is bad quality, which is properly ripened and which is not properly ripened. Okay, otherwise. The entire the moisture uh, content is one factor. Apart from this, the maturity coefficient of the cotton is going to change. What happens if you pick up the unripened cotton properly? Then what will happen? Obviously, the maturity coefficient will be much lesser, and it leads to more number of nips and entanglement of fibers. So, but the, the hand picking is often the most expensive method of harvesting. However, if you consider the losses in terms of the uh, the field which is caused by the ginning machines, then if you consider all those things, means with respect to the improved quality, okay, and the reduced thrash percentage, then if you consider in that way, then the hand picking may become cheaper. Okay. So the amount of cotton one person The picker picks by hand, depending upon these factors, like the yield and percentage of open balls. Okay, as it is like a grown one. Okay, the cotton which is cultivated. So what happens? All the balls will not be open at the same time. Okay, if you wait for the end of the day where all the balls will be open. The balls which are already open, what happens due to air and other things, it may get soiled and waste. Okay, so it should be avoided. So maybe in hand picking, it will be done on a uh, means once in four days. The people will go and plant the balls. Then, of course, it depends upon the ability of the picker. Okay, how good he is in his work, and. Uh, Depending upon the size and type of balls, as there are many genetic varieties, what happens is uh, there are uh, uh, different types of sizes and uh, different uh, ball sizes, and the number of pots in one ball is also going to change. Then the height of ball from the ground. So few will be there, which will be at two and a half feet. Few cotton varieties are there up to four and a half feet or five feet. Okay. So, depending upon the height, also the picking ability is going to change. But in generally, we can estimate around 100 kg per day per picker. Okay, and of course, depending upon the weather conditions, also the picking uh, capacity will be varied from person to person. Okay, and field to field, the geographical locations, and uh, various other factors. The second one is like a hand snap. Hand snapping means all the pods will be plucked. Okay. Sometimes in this what happens is maximum matured uh, balls will be there, but sometimes the small chances of immature balls also may come along. Okay. In this, a gloves will be used, and then it will be keep on plucking it. Okay. But the only thing is that the productivity will be higher. Okay. Then uh, maybe if you consider the productivity, they may. Uh, snap around 225 kg of uh, good cotton in a day, 
and while comparing this one, only 100 kg will be there in terms of the hand picking. Okay. So more productivity means what happens it is like not too uh, subjective means whatever is fully open up to some level. So the work of the brain to process will be much lesser. Okay. Maybe an unskilled labor also can do hand snapping. But for picking, skilled persons are frequent. So these are the two methods which will be done manually. Okay, we cannot differentiate at one location which one is going on. Okay, but basically uh, hand snapping is the common tool. Okay, which will be generally done in India and other locations where the labor rates are comparatively cheaper. Okay, and the, the countries like Australia, America, uh, and uh, Giza, like. Uh, in these areas and all, what happens is the mechanical harvesting is completely adapted. Nowadays in India also, uh, we are going for uh, mechanical harvesting. The mechanical harvesting is also referred as either machine picking or the making, machine uh, stripping. So this machine picking is basically came due to the increased labor problems and more area under the cotton cultivation okay which which forced for a search of alternative and faster methods of harvesting almost like from last four decades it came into existence in the last decade it got up its space especially in India okay so due to the labor problems and all what happens it forced for the invention of machines to pick cotton. Okay. So there are many several ideas which came uh, as a development process for machine picking and uh, as of today the most commercial pickers operate on a spindle type pickers. Spindle type pickers. I am going to show you a video maybe a little later so that you can understand the actual principle involved in the machine. So this machine, what happens is which uh, moves as like the lines which are available for uh, in the cotton plants. Okay. So what happens is each one will head will be there. In the figure which you can see a two head machine. This is a two head machine. So in that what will happen? It will keep on moving and then the spindles which are there on the rotor. So the rotor also rotates and spindle also rotates. So whenever this open cotton ball comes in contact, it will pluck it and the air will convey this cotton balls and keep it separate. Okay. So this basically creates the spinning action. So the spinning is always there with respect to the air manufacturing subjects. Even in the gymming, the spindles will be there and it will be rotated. Okay. So we can see in this figure the Spindles, the person who is holding that uh, is having the spindles, these spindles will be keep on rotating. So, the number of bales one machine can pick depending upon the, the scale of operator, the yield size, and the size and kind of stock and ball. Okay, what kind of uh, cotton variety it is, and defoliation. Okay, generally, a two row machine picker can harvest up to. 1000 kg per hour, 1000 kg per hour, okay, but whereas in the man, man, manual picking, how much it is, 100 kg per the entire day, okay, by considering average 10 hours in a day, so what happens, that is 100 kg and this is 10,000 kg, so 1 is 200, one operator can handle this machine, so what happens, this, by using this machine, it can perform a work of 100 people. Is it? Yeah. So we will see a video of uh, how this machine picker works. Laborers were able to harvest, but how do these cotton pickers actually work? How does the machine only remove the cotton fiber from the plants while leaving the rest of the plant behind? The row units, otherwise called heads, are responsible for all of the work. The yellow snouts on this picker pick up low hanging branches and guide the plant into the head. Inside the head is where all of the work occurs. 
Each head has two spinning drums that the cotton plants must pass by. Each drum is fitted with bars which hold rotating steel fingers with barbs called spindles. As the drums rotate, the spindles rake through the cotton plant and the barbs on the spindles snag the cotton lint and pull the cotton out of the hull. The front drums have 16 bars with 20 spindles on each bar. The rear drums have 12 bars with 20 spindles on each bar. Each row unit has a total of 560 spindles. The drums turn at extremely high rates of speed. After the spindles grab the cotton from the plant, the spindles pass under a rotating urethane pad with lugs called doffers. The doffers are spinning the opposite way that the spindles are. As the spindle passes under the doffer, the cotton is knocked off and thrown into the suction door. The cotton picker has an onboard high speed fan which blows air at high velocity through the suction doors. This high velocity air carries the cotton through the air ducts and blow the cotton into the basket. The basket is where the cotton is held until it is unloaded into the module builder. As the basket fills, augers compact the cotton to fit more cotton into it. The baskets on six row pickers can typically hold about five bales of cotton. Now this is where the design of modern cotton pickers can differ. The most modern cotton pickers have onboard module builders and do not need any extra machines in the fields to put the cotton into a package that can be transported to the gin. These pickers can harvest nonstop without ever having to stop to dump. However, this efficiency com comes with a big price tag. These uh, module building pickers are extremely expensive with new ones co costing close to $900,000. After the basket is full, the operator usually unloads the basket into a bowl buggy, which will then carry the cotton to the stationary module builder. Now that you've seen how a cotton picker works in slow motion, let's see what it looks like at full speed. understood the principle behind the machine picker okay let us see the other method of uh, what you call the machine stripper the cotton stripper okay so the machine stripping machine uh, which basically strips the cotton of the stock so these machine works on generally two, two principles one type is like a steel fingers which guide the stock into the mouth of the stripper these are the balls are removed from the stock. In the other uh, type is like a rotating steel roller strips will be there. So they also will enter into this one. Okay. We will see one of the video which uh, shows uh, a John Deere variety which is basically used in uh, Indian cotton fields. Okay. So this also works similar to the machine picker. Okay, but the damage to the stock will be more in case of a stripper basically.
Yes. So, we have seen all the different types of harvesting the cotton, okay, hand picking, hand stripping, machine picking and machine stripping, okay. Each one is having its own advantages and disadvantages based on the available raw material or the technological advancements from one place to another place, the type of harvesting is going to change. Now we will see how it is going to affect on the ginning performance. If you consider the trash percentage of the different types of picking, okay, like the first one, hand picking and then with a double roller gin, the trash is 4.9 percentage. The machine picking and a double roller gin is 12.8 percentage. It is very very trashy, okay. Then hand picking and incline cleaner, then the ginning. It is 3.3 percentage. Means whereas without inclined cleaner it is 5 percentage. With inclined cleaner it came down to 3.3 percentage. Then the machine picking with double inclined cleaner and a double roller chain it gives 6.7 percentage of the trash. Again, this is one of the experiment or the trial which is made by one of the researchers. Okay, again it varies depending upon the what kind of uh, genetic variety of cotton it is, what is the yield, what kind of picker they have used and optimization of this picker will also going to change the effect of machine picking or manual picking with respect to the trash percentage. But in generally we could say that the hand picking is much, produces much cleaner cottons compared with the machine picking. Is it? Why? Because in the spindle you have seen, right? In the spindles and all when it is rotating in the machine picker, what happens? The dried stack of the cotton plant will become into a small, small debris and collected along with the cotton. Okay. Then the separation of these particles will be very difficult for us. Is it? it? So that is the reason we will be having a stick machine, inclined cleaners and various other cleaners in the ginning process. So the, gin, the gin, during the ginning, pre-cleaning and post-cleaning is the major objective of removing this trash percentage. If during the picking and the harvesting itself, if the people are able to avoid this trash percentage, then what will happen? Obviously, it is it will be a very good condition for the spinner. Okay. Otherwise, it is very difficult for him to remove these trash particles in the next stage. Okay. So, what we understood from this slide? <laughs> the hand picking is much cleaner cotton. The hand picking produces much cleaner cotton and the machine picking may consist more amount of trash particles which requires further cleaning. Okay. Yes, this is the first point. Then the second point is the moisture content of the seed cotton. So the seed cotton which is high in moisture content will not gin, okay, will not gin or clean efficiently and it will choke up very frequently in the ginning machine, okay. And the seed cotton with very low moisture will be damaged by the ginning machine. Generally the ideal moisture content in the ginning is 7 percentage and the moisture in between 6 to 7.5 is acceptable. If it is less than 5 then the cotton is going to get damaged and a good quality lint cannot be produced. If it is more than 10 percentage then also too many problems will be there and it may cause frequent choking up and the machine stoppages and all will happen. So for a smoother running of the zinning mill to produce a optimum quality of the fiber 7 percentage of moisture content is recommended. It can be achieved either by storing and drying up under the sunlight or in case we may use certain one or two dryers basically to dry up the, the kapas the seed part. Okay. I hope you understood at this moment. <coughs> the third point is the feed rate of seed part. 
how much it is whether if you are uh, feeding it slowly output also will be slowly if you are keep on increasing the rate then what will happen output also will be there but if up to some extent it is okay but if it keep on increasing means more say the production capacity maximum is 1000 kg it is optimum to go for 600 kg per hour but instead if you are going for 1000 kg then what will happen the linked percentage may get damaged and the fiber output also may get a uh, uh, little uh, less performance is it so the optimum feed rate of seed cotton is required to feed into the ginning stand this is the one of the important parameter and the fourth parameter is the fiber attachment to the seeds yeah so in this table you can see the cotton variety and how much force required in terms of elts okay so gossypium barbadense is an extra long staple cotton okay which requires very less force okay like only 45 elts okay means very small force is required to separate the fibers from the seeds okay that's why either a mekarthizin or a knife roller zin is much recommended for the cotton varieties which are genetically related to gossypium barbadense these are the extra long staple cottons are also referred as sea island cottons also referred as sea island cottons okay and gossypium hirsutum and herbaceum are the medium staple cottons okay like asian cottons okay so which will be having little uh, force higher than the normal one and uh, gossypium arboreum is a short staple cotton short to medium staple and these are generally referred as american cottons these are generally referred as american cottons okay but it is not mandatory that all these things are cultivated in american but these are generally referred as american cotton so these american cottons requires more amount of force okay to separate the fibers from the seeds okay so what happens is gossypium arboreum this cottons are recommended to gin in a sanjining machine okay the gossypium hirsutum and herbaceum these are recommended to for go for a uh, the knife roller gin as like which are generally referred in india as like a dr gin double roller gin okay and the barbadense the gossypium barbadense extra long staple cottons are the sea island cottons these can be used either in a mekarthizin very rarely and even the, the knife roller gin is also okay and what we need to understand here is that the force required to pull the fibers from the seed was in most cases lower than the uh, fiber strength itself otherwise what happens this pulling force itself may cause the breakage of the fibers is it so that is the reason the gilling is carried out okay so what happens when you reduce the moisture to the almost less than 5% then what will happen this strength may become much weaker in such a way that the fiber attachment to seed this force will be greater than the fiber strength so in that case what happens the fiber itself will get broken i hope you are understanding at this point okay the force required to pull out the fibers from the seed itself should be lesser than the fiber strength okay then only it is possible to perform the ginning otherwise fiber itself will be broken now in case of an immature fiber also what will happen the same situation will be repeated where the fiber strength is much lesser in such a way that it will be made into small fibers and leads to more short fiber content in the cotton variety which is obtained okay so that leads to many of the process difficulties and which should be avoided as much as possible okay so this is one of the <laughs> important parameter the genetic variety how it is going to affect okay the ginning performance and in generally how to choose what kind of ginning machine for what cotton varieties long staple cotton varieties requires less force for ginning 
So, in charge ending the brute force, what it will do? It will break the cotton into more number of short fibers. So, it is not recommended. For gazipium verbatim, sarginine is not recommended. Okay. Only a mecarthizin or a knife roller is not recommended. Mecarthizin, the low productivity. Okay. Knife roller is somewhat better. But whereas sarjin, it is 10 times higher than a knife roller. So, the arborium, gazipium arborium, which requires 88 helps. Okay. Which can be easily and conveniently used in sarginine machine. Okay. Yes. I think you understood uh, the importance of this one. Okay. So, the coarser and short fibers require more energy than the fiber and long fibers to perform or to pull out the from the cotton seed. So, based on this assessment, we can say that the coarser fibers should be performed uh, ginning in sajin the fine fibers should be performed ginning in a double roller gin. So in India, which gins are mostly used? Double roller gins. In case of very short staple cotton, then what will happen? A saw gin also can be used. Yes. Yeah. So this slide shows the moisture versus the storage days. As you can see, uh, the moisture content percentage after 30 days storage will be having around 8 to 10 percentage. Uh, before that, if the storage is only 20 days, 10 to 12 percentage. If the storage days is only 10 days, 12 to 14 percentage. And if the, days, the number of days stored from uh, harvesting, then within 3 days means the moisture percentage is 14 to 15. During the pickup, it might be up to 25 percentage of moisture content in the capas. Okay. After storage, so that is the reason once it is stored, maybe after one week or 10 days only, it will reach us to the uh, ginning plant in such a way that there, there also their people will be store them in the open area such that Due to this storage, what happens? The moisture content is going to be reduced. So, it will help us for better ginning performance. And another important point we need to consider is the mode of transportation. So, during the transportation, the people need to take maximum care to avoid any of the other uh, impurities like maybe jute to sacks or any of the PP bags. This transportation material also goes along with the raw material which is kapas and it creates so many impurities and contamination in the required cotton. And this should be avoided as much as possible so that it will produce a cleaner cotton and a better cotton so that a very good quality yarns can be produced with cleaner cotton. It will be having uh, very good quality in terms of the strength, reduced in nerves, and also no foreign fibers. Okay. So these are the many things which are required in case of a gene. Okay. So these are the points which we have done before the gene. Okay. So during the gene, what happens? Two points we could discuss. One is the atmospheric conditions. What should be the relative humidity during ginning? Okay, as we understood, cotton is a hygroscopic fiber and the properties of fibers are going to change with respect to the relative humidity. It have a greater impact in the processes in terms of the spinning mill. Okay, whether well, it also affects the ginning mill performance, we will see. And other thing is the conditioning equipment that is basically the drying equipment. Okay. It should not be over dried and it should not be having high moisture. That is the point. Already I think we covered the conditioning equipment. But let us see one time. So what is the atmospheric conditions? So the ginning percentage was not affected by the changes of relative humidity. Okay. 
as dry as 30 percent and as moisture as 80 percent also is not much affecting the ginning percentage okay but the moisture content in the cotton is going to affect but the RH is not going to affect the ginning percentage okay that we could say but the static electricity which is produced due to less moisture content or very high uh, relative humidity causes a serious problem okay when the cotton is super dry okay so that is the reason what happens certain anti static agents will be applied with a percentage of 0.1 to 0.2 percentage by means of the linked weight will be sprayed just before the kapas will enter into the ginning process okay so this is one precaution we can take and it will seriously affect the ginning performance the static electricity what is static electricity even if you can rub a plastic pen under with a polyester or something also what happens it attracts a small paper or dust that is basically due to the static electricity and it, is, it poses a serious problem with respect to the ceiling. Okay. The second point is <laughs> the conditioning equipment. Okay. If it performs over drying, it will become a serious problem. Okay. So the two requirements are the two checklists which will affect this problem is one is the drying temperature and another one is how much time it is, exposure it is there. Okay. In the dryer. In the dryer. So that is what uh, for this class. I hope you, you understood. So what is the takeout in this class? What are the various factors which are going to be affect the ginning performance? And a better gined uh, lint, what happens if it, it will be a very good and easy for a spinner to convert these fibers into the yarn. Okay. So at each stage, the people need to take maximum care to avoid the trash percentage and the moisture content should be kept in optimum condition like 7.5 percentage and depending upon the, the cotton variety and all we need to select what kind of ginning machine we need to take okay and out of the harvesting methods the manual picking or the machine uh, manual picking is much better than the machine picking isn't it yeah but if you consider the productivity, the machine picking is much better. But uh, again, it depends upon the availability of uh, manpower, labor and various other activities such that it is going to influence. And many times in India, the ginning people are different and spinning people are different and in between there will be some mediators who will purchase the kapas and send to the ginning industries also. So, we do not have an... Uh, concrete infrastructure to trace back but still there are many developments which are taking place in this region and uh, the government of India also have come up with various other uh, techniques like TMC technology mission on cotton so this TMC is going to work on improvement of uh, the infrastructure available at uh, ginning industries and various other clusters in each region such that the Indian cottons are not become a trashy cottons. Okay. So that is the takeout from this class. I hope ki we have learned something new today and I hope uh, you enjoyed this class and uh, thank you very much for patient listening to this. Okay. So thank you very much. Stay safe and uh, stay healthy. Thank you.